Hi, everyone, and welcome to Wine.com Experiences. I'm Gwendolyn Osborne. Today, we are taking a tour through the country of Chile, and where we'll taste three delicious wines that highlight the diversity and terroir of the country. If you've purchased wines ahead of time from wine.com, fantastic. Please make sure you go ahead and get those open, get them into some glassware if you can. Um, there are three wines we'll be tasting and we hope you'll open all three tonight and taste them side by side. Um, it's really great to see how they kind of um, showcase little different pockets of Chile and they're the kind of wines that will definitely last in your fridge a few days so you can revisit them. That said, as all of our videos, this one will live on on our wine.com YouTube channel so you can revisit it and taste the wines once again. If you're looking for more detailed notes on these wines, you can find those at wine.com. Our wine pages are just full of tons of information and maps and critic reviews and wine tasting notes. So please feel free to dive in deeper, although I know we're gonna talk um, about these wines in great depth today. The three wines we are tasting in order are the Vina Leda, Sauvignon Blanc, the Casa La Postol Cabernet Sauvignon, and the Santa Rita Triple C. So before I introduce our guests, I wanted to just give a brief-ish introduction to Chile as a wine growing country because I, I love this country. It's so fascinating because actually, as you can see here, it's a very long and narrow country. And what's so interesting to me about the geography and climate is that this country, when it comes to growing wine, the climate differs more going east to west, even though that's a really smaller area, than north to south. In fact, they've even separated into three different geographical kind of subclimates where you have the coastal there next to the Pacific Ocean, you come into the valleys where it's a little bit warmer, and then you come up to the Andes, um, where that just has some really fantastic microclimates, especially when it comes to the soil. Um, that said, uh, Chile also has the capacity to grow organically and sustainably. It's just really a healthy place for grapes. It's very low in disease, um, not very many pests. And uh, the diversity of grapes is just amazing. You can have this beautiful, cool climate, crisp Chardonnay, and then right after that, have a big, full-bodied, rich um, Chardonnay from, from the valleys um, where it's a little bit warmer. You've got vibrant Pinot Noir, you've got big and bold Syrah, there's just a little bit of everything for everyone. But our guests are going to talk a lot more about that in detail for us. So let's introduce them. Um, we, from uh, Santa Rita, we have Sebastian Labe. Welcome, Sebastian. We have uh, Viviana Navarrete from Vina Leda. Welcome. Hi. And we have Charles Dubournay from Casa La Pastole. Welcome, Charles. Hey, How are Wonderful you? to have you all here. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about Chile and your wines. Um, before we, we get started tasting the wines, I kind of wanted to um, start with a little bit of a broad question that maybe you can kind of touch on some things that stand out for you. Obviously, Chile is just a magical place to for wine, to grow grapes, to make wine. Could each of you kind of give us an idea of what excites you the most about Chilean wine? In that broad question sense. Uh, Viviana, can we start with you? I think when, well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation to Cadwen, Mike. It's amazing to have this opportunity. So thank you very much. I, I would say that today is a great time for being uh, participating in the Chilean um, business in the winemaking. Uh, I think what we have been experimenting in, in our country is a lot of evolution, movement. Um, if you remember in the last 80s or beginning of the 90s, the main production of wine was done in the Central Valley, very focused in reds. Uh, and what we see nowadays is that a lot of valleys are being discovered up north, in the coast, up in the mountains, 1,600 uh, high, and even in the south. So our country is moving and it's not only discovering new appellation of origin, but also working with different varieties and changing a little bit the, the philosophy in the winemaking. So I think people are excited that they are looking into new styles of wine. And of course they are showing a different face of Chile. So we have the tradition that is really good and there's a lot of work there, but we also have this crazy movement that is delivering new styles of wine. So I think it's a lot of happening in our country and that is exciting. That is exciting. Um, Charles, what about you? What would be your 
excitement factor for Chilean wine? Well, it's uh, being a French, from a French family, we, we arrived and we've been producing wine and spirits, as you know, in, uh, since 1827 in France. And when we arrived in 1994, we fell in love with this country. I mean, Chile for us is, is uh, as, as a good French, I'm going to be very French. I mean, it's, it's like a new France, you know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a France, uh, France 2.0. I mean, how many countries do you have as a wine producer where you can plant any grapes? So literally because of what you said, you know, like Chile goes on North America. If you put Chile, it goes from Alaska to Mexico. So the, the amount, the, vari the varieties of terroir that you have are amazing. And then what you said, from east to west, you have the, the pre-Cordillera, you have the coastal range, and this is going to create a huge difference on a very little uh, little time. So at the end of the day, Chile is a winemaker's paradise. Give me one grape, and I will let you know exactly where to plant it in Chile. There's not a single grape that you cannot find a perfect place to plant it in Chile. So it's very exciting to be a winemaker in Chile. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, what, and I love that, the, the Central Valley that I said, because I didn't know how to pronounce it, Cuquidera, is that region in the center? Is that how I pronounce it? Do well, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, Colchagua, uh, maybe? No, coastal, coastal, but then they were calling it something that was mean Central Valley, and I thought you had mentioned it, but... Um, Cordillera, which is mountain. I mean, the okay. Cordillera. Yeah, That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. But, yeah. 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 but I love what you said, too, and I think that Chile, just over the past few decades, has found that, that way to find that perfect place. Like what you said, I think that's how far the country has come, where it now knows, oh, you have that grape? Let's go here. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. Um, yeah, it wasn't the case before. Before someone would just in Chile uh, 30 years ago, and, and I think, you know, Sebastian and Vienna can talk more about that than I know. But when we arrived, we saw everyone planting, you know, like Cabernet Sauvignon at the same place. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, like uh, little by little with the new wave of, uh, of your winemakers like Viviana and Sebastian, and uh, I think, you know, we, we had a bit something to do too here, taking advantage of the new terroir and saying, hello guys, you know, here's, Casab here's Cabernet don't plant Sauvignon here. No, let's find a new place because there is a new place. So I think, you know, this is really what Chile for me is a winemaker's paradise. Sebastian, what about, what about you? Anything you can kind of expand upon? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, we're being given by nature with a country that is just fantastic in terms of diversity, both in soils and climates. And I think we're getting to a point um, with the Chilean wine industry with reaching a maturity where the tradition of wines that have been made in different valleys for a long time are getting, you know, very playing with um, the new ideas of finding new varieties and establishments. So I think it's a, it's a great moment right now um, where we have Cabernet Sauvignons, for example, with, you know, dry farmed in vines that, that are a hundred years old. And then you have actually new vineyards pushing limits. And there is, as I fully agree with Charles, I think there is um a huge diversity for every single variety you want to play with, you're going to find ideal conditions, either north to south and also east to west. So it's kind of like a matrix where there's so much to explore. And so I think we're, yeah, we were very given by nature with a fantastic country. Yeah, it's, it's great. It is a good time right now. I, I was able to, I had the privilege of visiting in 2006, but even then I had had um, a Chardonnay from Marie Valley and I thought, I, I've never heard of this valley and now I see it everywhere. So it's, I think everything's kind of, growing and expanding and, and coming to reach, you know, consumers in, in different countries, which is fantastic. So um, let's get tasting with some wine. So we're gonna start with the Sauvignon Blanc from Leda Valley, um, Viviana. And, and for those of you at home, please feel free to start tasting as we chat. Um, but, but, but Leda, the Leda Valley is, is more of a, one of those newer regions as we were talking Viviana. And I know that Vina Leda, this winery was instrumental and in part of the creation of separating Leda as its own DO back in 2001. Can you tell us a little bit about the terroir here in Leda, what makes it so unique? Yes, when is exactly what you're saying. I, I think the main strength of Leda Winery is that we are pioneer of a new appellation of origin in Chile that is Leda Valley. That's why we have the same name of the valley. And the reason is that uh, when the oldest owner of Leda Winery came into this place, as you see in the first oh. photograph, it's a very dry area. There was no viticulture history before because uh, we receive only 250 millimeters of rainfall. So that's nothing for growing vines naturally. So to start with the project, with the first plantings, 
the family together with the government and some privates had to do a huge investment to build an eight kilometers or five miles of pipeline in order to take water from the Maipo River, which you are seeing right now, uh, and irrigate the plants because here is everything about drip irrigation. So that happened 22 years ago. And then the family uh, registered the brand Leida Winery because it's the name of the town. So we had to have something local. And then because of the special characteristic that this place has, that is the climate, the cool climate and the nice soil, they went to the government and asked for the creation of a new appellation of origin, which was Leida Valley. Uh, so it was something huge to put a spot in our map. Um, and that happened 22 years ago. So we were the first one. But now in the valley, you find 1,900 hectares planted. Yes, that's grown a lot. It's still something small. And what, what grape about. varieties are most well suited for this region? Which varieties? Yes. Well, here the climate is very cold. We have the influence of the Pacific Ocean because we have the humble current influence that comes down south from the Antarctica and this cold uh, current goes up through the country and at the same time goes inside the country. Uh, so it affected living low temperatures, it's very foggy, it's mist with a lot of wind. So you can imagine that it's the paradise for Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. And back 20 years ago, we were considered crazy people to, to sell and, and, and produce Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. People said, how are you going to export these varieties which are not traditional to Chile? Uh, but then time gave us reason uh, to be specialized in what nature gives you. So if you are in the great uh, climate condition with beautiful soils is what you have to do. So our soul or our uh, main production is focusing Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir, but we also do a little bit of Syrah, cool climate style. Mm -hmm. We do Sauvignon Gris, Riesling, and Chardonnay. Okay, so all beautiful. Everything cool what is climate. what grows beautifully in, in cool climate. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Cool well, let's let's uh, taste the Sauvignon Blanc. Maybe you can talk us through it as we taste through it with the the flavor profile that Leda can can give to it. In general, I would say that uh, Leda Valley, not only Leda Winery, but Leda Valley, in general, the, the, the characteristic of the wine is that you're going to find, of course, fresh fruit, very intense aromas, but there's something that you can find that is unique of this place that is herbaceous character, the mm -hmm. herbal character. Yes. And you will find it not only in Sauvignon Blanc, but also in Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And this Sauvignon is taken from two vineyards that we have here. One is only... Uh, 2.5 miles from the Pacific Ocean, which was the, the um, photograph you, you showed before. Um, so it's very windy, it's very cold. Uh, and here in this shop, we use three different clones. So it has a little bit of clone one, uh, clone 242 on clone 107. We harvest every clone by separate. It has different exposure. You, you saw the rolling hills. We are in the coastal mountain. So we have this topography of small hills. Um, and we harvest all the clones by separate, all the blocks by separate as well. And then in, in the cellar, we do um, reductive uh, vinification. So we protect the use from the very beginning. We leave it for about 50 to 70 NTU. We do a little bit of maceration, of cold maceration in the press. And then the fermentation is 100% in stainless steel tank because what we want to deliver is a very fresh uh, and fruity profile. So what you find here, I would say in, in the first place, is almost these grassy notes, like herbal character. And then in the second layer, you can find like this grapefruit or citrus aromas. Yeah. Almost a little bit like a mandarin. And then in the third layer comes a little bit of, of this, uh, um, not passion, yeah, passion fruit and guava. So you find, I would say these three layers of herbal character, then a little bit of citrus notes and then tropical fruit. Yes, there are, there are layers here. It's beautiful, <laughs> lots of layers. And then in the palate, what I find fantastic is this crisp acidity. It's make, it makes you, I don't know this, the English word, like we say salivate. 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 It's very, the same very salivate. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. that. And, and that is a special condition of Leda. You know, when you are in a cold area like this, imagine that as an average, we have 55 Fahrenheit 
it's 13 Celsius degrees, it's 55 Fahrenheit. So it's very cold compared to other regions in Chile. And that allows you to have this fresh fruit, these crunchy berries. And when you make the vinification, all this beautiful acidity that is very high goes into the juice, into the wine, and we like to keep it in the bottle. So that's an identity of, of the wine. It's identity of Leida Valley. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. I love the acidity. And I love that you go to a, the cool climate can produce a wine that is so great when it's really hot outside. <laughs> So you're going from a cool climate to a wine that is perfect in a much warmer climate. So this is like a <laughs> hot day, refreshing kind of kind of thing. So this is a, quite a pretty wine. Um, it's perfect for the days you are living there. Yeah. For the weather you're having right now. Yes. Um, but um, I know we're tasting the Sauvignon Blanc, but I did want to touch on what I think the other grape you spoke of, Pinot Noir, because again, when I, you know, 15 years ago, that was not really something Chile was known for. I feel like it's just really grown this past decade and in, in quality and availability to, to people outside of Chile, but just kind of the recognition that there are places that do this so well. So, and I know you've, you've won many awards and of, of how well you are able to masterfully create craft or guide Pinot Noir into the bottle. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the characteristics of Pinot Noir there. We make beautiful Pinot, uh, really. I'm very passionate about that grape variety, a little bit crazy and obsessed as well. And we have been working very strong, I would say for the last six uh, years, because we changed our mentality and we are obsessed to show a cool climate Pinot Noir. So we started doing a huge um, soil research making a lot of pits to really understand the composition of soil that we have. Uh, and we made a lot of micro vinification. So we understood that the granitic soil was giving vibrancy to the Pinot. The beautiful thing about Leida Valley is that the granito is associated to iron and both gives vibrancy to the palate. And that's very important for Pinot Noir. So we're crafting Pinot that are almost crunchy, almost uh, sinewy texture, uh, looking for the red acid fruit profile, again, showing the herbal character that is typical of this appellation of origin. And with little oak, that's important. We want to show the fruit, the, the perfume, the floral uh, notes. Uh, so that's why we have gone out of the barrels and using more these big casks without any toast and the concrete vessels that works really good. Uh, so in general, that's that's what we are we're looking for today. Lower alcohol also. So we are in 13, maximum 13.5. If, if it's higher, I kill myself. So it's almost 13. <laughs> but just want to deliver freshness, juiciness. And uh, at the end of the consumer that takes a bottle of Leida Pinot Noir, transport themselves and say, this is a cool climate Pinot. And I think we are in the paradise for, for making that, that uh, great variety. Well, if you at home have not had Chilean Pinot Noir, then this is the place to start, is, is the Elida. So thank you, Viviana. Um, we're going to move on to the Cabernet, Casa La Postole. Uh, Charles La Postole was its own kind of pioneer in Chile, being one of the first French families to come invest in the country and bring over some of the French techniques. Um, what about Chile inspired your parents? I think you spoke a little bit of it. They fell in love with it, but... Um, you know, for the land and everything, but what was it that drew them there to make a vineyard their own? Well, you know, you know, you know, it's it's um, it, it's actually the the Apalta Valley. So, mm -hmm. the you know, my my families we've been producing Grand Marnier. We're very famous for for Grand Marnier, but we also uh, uh, have in the wine business we have the Chateau de Sancerre. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's I love that wine. Sauvignon Blanc uh, uh, and, uh, and Pinot Noir. So for us, we always wondered, you know, my mother was very curious about what had happened to Chile, knowing that it's the only country that never had phylloxera. So mm -hmm. she wanted to visit and say, okay, what happened? You know, like, did they, did they, what happened to the vines? Did they die, the state evolve? You know, you never know. So uh, she went there and uh, in the Apalta Valley, she found uh, 100 acres of pre phylloxeric Cabernet Sauvignon and Carmenere the last grape of Bordeaux. So she was like, oh my God, you know, like it's, uh, it's unique in the world. It's the only in the, so that was really fun for us to, uh, to we fell in love with the Apalta Valley. And uh, it was fun for us to, to come to Chile. And, and of course, as I say, we're, we're, we are from Sancerre. So Pinot Noir and Sauvignon Blanc. So for us, uh, 
uh, we, we wanted to do something a bit different. And also being French, we have quite a bit of, uh, of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, 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 and so we, we, we know a bit what to do with it. So it was really fun to do uh, 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 a Cabernet Sauvignon in Chile and to play with the Carminaire. So uh, really uh, the Apartheid Valley has stunning conditions. Funny enough, you know, uh, uh, Viviana is a bit the same story that Leda with Apalta, because the only problem is that uh, up until recently, Chile could only name deals if there were a town uh, next to it, okay? So Leda was named after the town of Leda. Problem is there's no town of Apalta. So for us, it took us 25 years of dealing with the Chilean authorities to tell them Apalta is its own DO. So to explain really the concept that it doesn't have to do anything with towns or administration and anything, you know? So now we finally managed to have Apalta since 2018 as its own DO. Wow. I was super excited. And of course, our iconic wine, you know, Clarapalta has been, uh, it's named a bit like Leda, it's named after the valley. So we, we, we knew a bit what to do. So yeah, yeah. there's the winery, the winery and the residence of Clavalta. And uh, so now we're super excited. Uh, I think we, we have 800 hectares total in uh, Apalta Valley between uh, all of us. Uh, Sebastian has a bit of grapes there too. So he knows quite well the, the, the place. And, uh, and we, we have a lot of fun uh, in, in Apalta. And I know that, I mean, this region, it, and you grow many uh, wonderful varietal wines, but what, what is it about the valley and the soil and this region that um, does so well for red varieties, especially Cabernet? So to, to, I, I think, you know, if we go in details with Apalta, we, we, I can make a master class for two or Small three details. <laughs> but, <laughs> Small but details. I think, you know, like three, three things we can say without getting into uh, boring details, uh, technicalities and so on, is that um, uh, uh, the Apalta Valley has colluvial and granitic soil. So it means we're, we're actually close but far away from the river. So this is gonna give a very nice concentration to the grapes. Uh, the tannins, very a lot of tannins and the, and the low uh, and the high acidity, low pH naturally. So this is gonna be really different than uh, the Cabernet that are from Maipo, which have a different texture and so on. Another thing too that we have is the, the uh, but that's for Chile too. I think that's, a, and I think, you know, Sebastian will talk about Cabernet too, and he'll say the, the thermic um, uh, difference between nights and days uh, makes that Cabernet Chile in, uh, Cabernet in Chile is very different than any other countries because we get really, you know, cool nights and hot days. So we get beautiful fruits, but we don't like super jamie or we're not like super elegant like France. We're really good in the between like bringing elegance, but fruit to it. So I think Chile has the best of both worlds, you know, for Cabernet. We have the best of France and the best of the US. No disrespect to my friends. Uh, I know. <laughs> you are definitely a, a Chilean Frenchman right there. That's, that's, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we're proud. The best of both worlds. No, I, yeah, I think that's good. That diurnal shift obviously is very important when you're when you're making wine and, and growing grapes and and. Oh, it's it's key, you know. The last thing is that uh, Apalta had this when we arrived. You know, as I said at the beginning, they had these very old vineyards. I think Sebastian mentioned them too in the in his uh, at the beginning, planted hundred years ago. Uh, you know, like ungrafted, uh, dry farm. This is unique in the world. You know, there is no other country that can grow uh, a Cabernet like this. Why is this important? Lower yield naturally, and of course, concentration. So, and of course we have also slopes. Those, that's a bit different too. So again, looking for lower yields naturally and so on. So very different and a very uh, Cabernet with a lot of personality. Good, well, let's taste the personality in this wine. Um, if you could kind of talk us through it and kind of how this represents you know, the sense of place of where, where we're coming in. So, um, exactly. So here, you know, typical for, uh, for us, what we want to do at La Postole, it's always about balance. So we look for elegance, but we look for fruit. And I think, you know, with Apalta is really amazing for this. We can have, we have stunning conditions that allow us to get to the fuel maturity of the grapes. So having a very, very beautiful, expressive, you know, and intense nose uh, with a bit of cassis and black currant uh, uh, aromas. And, and yes, and really on the palate, you know, a, a very elegant, round, and, and as I said, the tannins, very persistent tannins. And, and I think this is going to be key. And, and well, you know, I'm, I'm glad that apparently the, the, this one is doing quite well on wine.com because it was, uh, it was number 41 on your, uh, on your uh, top wines, uh, top 100 wines of the world uh, uh, last year. So. I was quite quite glad that uh, that to be in this uh, in this. So, 
Very, very nice, Cabernet. I think, you know, it's, uh, it, it, this is where Chile excels is we, we give a run for their money to a lot, to a lot of people in our wines. You know, so having a Cabernet uh, like of this quality at such a price point, um, you know, it's good. I think, and that's what does it is you're looking at somewhere, you know, the, the, um, the investment in the land in Chile is just, they're producing such amazing wine. It's such a wonderful value, um, price to value uh, ratio, quality to price no, ratio. So the value is tremendous. If you want to have the same quality from another country, you might pay three to four times more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Chile has amazing conditions and, and Apalta for us, it's the style that we like. And, uh, and and really uh, where we can find the French finesse, but the fruit mm -hmm. of Chile. So as we say, you yeah. know, La Pocca is always, you know, French in essence, but Chilean by design. So, uh, and uh, and that's what we look for. Love it. And speaking of Cloa Palta, um, so I know that um, I even brought out mine. Um, so this is kind of this, your wine, the Cloa Palta helped kind of put Chile on the world's kind of wine radar when, it uh, was the first, and I still think it's the only Chilean wine to be named number one for the Wine Spectator Top 100. And that was the 05 Vintage, which yes. I have a bottle of. Yeah, so wow. I don't know how I didn't drink it yet, but um, hanging on to that. But And you are hitting your 20th anniversary, right? Exactly. So Palta. the goal, when we arrived in Chile, our goal was really to, to, to look for the best wine possible. So we wanted to prove that Chile could actually make wines not, not, not that just amazing. We could rivals with the best wine in the world. So of course we didn't know, you know, we were French. We, we didn't really know the vineyard. So we, we took a few years and we arrived in 94 and in 97, finally, we had a bit of a, of a hold on the, on the vineyard and understanding better uh, what we had. And this is when we created Club Alta. And we were stunned that in, in as you said, you know, 2005, so the seven vintage was already number one in the world by one spec. And uh, 2017 was actually launched worldwide today. So it's a very special day for us. Yeah. 20th anniversary was uh, uh, a launch. And yeah. uh, so beautiful very bottle. Packaging, you know, very special packaging for, for this. Uh, beautiful packaging, of course, you know, the blue that is uh, so stunning is part of the bottle. And uh, and today was released, so I, I think yeah. it's available on presale. Uh, presale for, for wine.com, yeah. And so. uh, what a best way to have an anniversary when James Suckling gives you 100 points for the third time in Ooh. four years. Hey. Uh, that was, uh, so that was great. Uh, quite, quite Happy anniversary to you. That's great. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. Um, well, delicious wines. I, you know, it's wonderful wines that you've um, produced there over the years. And yeah, again, I mean, both of these, why all three of these wines, just that that value, that um, quality that's coming out of there for for what something that won't break the bank, but makes you feel like a million bucks is fantastic. So, um, so thank you. Uh, we are going to move on to Santa Rita, which is probably the most pioneering, given that it's founded in 1880. Um, it was one of the first wineries to plant European varieties here. Um, so Sebastian, Santa Rita is in that Maipo Valley, which is one of the oldest, if not the oldest valley in the, in the country for viticulture, um, right near Santiago. Can you tell us a little bit about the geography of, of Maipo? Am I saying it right? Maipo. Yeah, yeah it was Maipo Valley. It's um, located just a little bit further south of Santiago, you know, the, the main capital. Um, and in, this is actually the, the origin of Triple C. And we're... Santa Rita it's located that's actually um where the park is located a 40 hectare beautiful park actually designed actually with um with um landscape designers actually from France in the late 1800s so it's got that all that history that has been kind of um driving um the the, the traditional varieties planted in them a while back in in the Maipo Valley so Alto Jauel which is the exact site where we are located and it's actually that piece of land. So, it, so you can see actually the Maipo River. That's the same river that actually ends up in the ocean where, where Viviana showed before. So you see actually a very contrast in this, you know, very long country. Mm -hmm. And here we are at the foothills of the Andes Ranges. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very important, the influence actually we do get from, from the Andes Ranges cooling down the vineyards. As Charles actually mentioned before, it's, and that range give us actually benefits in terms of um, pest and diseases, keeping climatic conditions ideal. Um, but being a very strong Mediterranean climate, we are able to get very ripe flavors around the tannins. The triple C, um, and the name actually stands for it, it's a blend of three varieties that starts actually with a capital C. So it's a Cabernet Franc on the majority of the composition, Cabernet Sauvignon on the second place, and a touch of Carmenere, which also comes from the Apalta Valley. 
Um, so we are basically on both Cabernet Sauvignons and Franc concentrated in, in, in Maipo Valley, which mm -hmm. we think in the flat alluvial terraces, so gravelly soil. The vines kind of strive actually to survive having a very balanced um, stress season and they produce actually thicker skins, very bright flavors. And this is a wine that has a lot of history, the first vintage of 1997. And so we've been actually getting a little bit more knowledge of how Cabernet Franc uh, variety that it's you know, pretty much um, very in fashion now, in, especially in this part of the world, but now it has been planted in this time. And there is a important component of triple C and it's important components of actually many traditional blends and then supported by Cabernet Sauvignon that gives actually the kind of the backbone of the wine. And then Carmen Air, which I think it does the best in terms of rounding everything with unique tannins, especially from a place like Avalta, which I think it's a, just a fantastic site. Yeah, and, and the Maipa though is, is known for, you know, red wines, red wine territory. So are the Cabernet the two that do the best there? Do you also do some Merlot? What other kind of uh, red grapes are kind of- Oh, in, 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 our, in our Alto Jauel estate, we are devoted around 75%, um, it's Cabernet. Um, we have other varieties like Petit Verdot and Cabernet Franc in smaller percentages. Um, Merlot used to be widely planted, although other varieties in the past, like, you know, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, for example, but then all those varieties have been planted and devoted to its specific condition, which goes back actually to the experience and expertise that the Chilean industry is basically have been gaining over, over its history. And there's a more specification now in which it was planted. So Maipo Valley, it's basically, I would say, Cabernet land. If you get actually some of the top Cabernets of the country, most of them are actually a great number of them tend to come from these alluvial terraces of the Maipo Valley. Yeah, and that's some very good dirt, as I like to call it, uh, which is important. But I, I, I yeah, like it's the, good. It's, yeah, yeah, it's good, and, and like it has it has something beautiful about it's the volume of stones in the soil profile. For example, if you see it, it's covered in stones, so 65, 70 percent of the soil is used by stones. So that's limit actually the amount of soil that is available to the plant, and they really strive and struggle to get the root system very down into the ground. And then you start getting things that are, have consistency over time. And I think that's where magic starts. That is where magic starts. I like that phrase. <laughs> it's like once the roots get down there, that's where the magic starts. And I like the triple C because it's kind of your take on a Bordeaux blend since Carmenere is the, the lost grape of, of Bordeaux. So you've got the two Cabernets and Carmenere. Exactly. It could be a, like a pre phylloxera um, Bordeaux blend. You know, <laughs> actually, we we'll get actually on, on the labeling spot because triple C is part of a, of a, of a collection of wine that it's, we call collection of origin, where all actually labels are inspired in actually some parts of the park. In this particular case, this is the, of the, of the spring. And um, we actually just triplicate the heads in order to have one C for each actually variety. But it's a wine that has its soul in Alto Cahuel. And actually we've been trying to get a lot of understanding of how Frank Cabernet Sauvignon and Carmen, the three varieties can really adds its own bit to actually to show the best of, you know, of each variety in a, in a particular blend. Okay, well, let's taste it to find that out. I would love to kind of taste it and touch on that flavor profile of what the grapes and maybe what the, the, the soil of the region is giving to this. Absolutely, this we're tasting a 2015 vintage, yeah. which is a, probably a really classic, um, a classic year. I think it's a lot of actually a combination of red fruit, like, um, like you know, cassis or more on the strawberry side or the raspberry side, but then you get a lot of actually darker fruit. Some a lot in, in terms of that um, blackberry is slightly, uh, is, um, but then you get something that it's all those tobacco notes and um, some graphite notes, which I think are kind of very clean and intensive, but very delicate as well. I think it's a wine that plays on both sides, tense, but it's also delicate and refined. Um, Then in the mouth, I think it's at that kind of a velvety sensation with a lot of tannins that are powerful, but they're mm -hmm. kind of very fresh. And there is definitely the backbone or the structure of the wine given by Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and then there is a roundness, a lushness in terms of um, those velvety tannins. Carmen are being, you know, I'm, in a small percentage, I can really put, you know, make an impact here. Yeah, I it think does. It adds that, that velvety texture. Um, yeah, the texture is just, Beautiful. Like makes it a little too easy to drink, but um, it's really <laughs> quite quite pretty. And even in the nose, I love that nose because you were talking about all those fruits, but there's like a little kind of floral or, or maybe something they call it brambly because it's, you know, what um, like blackberry, Absolutely. cassis kind of on the vine, like on the, yeah. so it's got that kind of 
mix with the herbal part. Um, it's really. I think this is a wine that can have that bubble functioning in terms of it's a wine that can you can drink on its own. It's basically all with food. It's a, it's yeah. a food wine. But you know, you can have a glass of it it's in terms of it's got structure, it's lushness, but it's got mm -hmm. all that velvety round the tannins and yeah, and a very fresh finish. Very pretty. And it definitely speaks Chile. So I think um, all of these wines do. They're just really very representative, I think, of the diversity and the quality and um, everything Chile uh, gives to the wine world. So um, on a finishing note, I would love to hear, I guess, from each of you, um, you know, what's next? What are you seeing for the future of, of Chile, either from just where you are or as Chile as a whole um, in the world? Um, so Viviana, can we start with you on that? Uh, speaking especially about Leda Winery, um, we really are focusing in what we do when uh, sometimes journalists ask which is the next variety or which is the next trial and you like you will never stop and I think that our time is to get deeper in knowledge. Uh, we do eight different grape varieties and that th I think that's okay but we need to get go deeper. You have to remember that the vines are young, they are, the oldest are 20 years. That's nothing in the viticulture world. And the last vineyard was planted in 2010. So they are 12 years old. They're little kids. Uh, and we are still uh, making, making research in the soil and studying. So I think the learning curve in the viticulture is really long. Yeah. Uh, I think we are just going into the, the, the plane, uh, but, that's our work now today, yeah. going deeper, studying and making best. I, I, I have in my head making the best Pinot Noir from Chile and I'm not going to get tired until I make it. And I think that's, I wake up every morning <laughs> with that in my mind. And I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed. Um, but when you have that kind of goal, I think it's, you're always improving yourself, like not feeling in, you're in the comfortable zone. Mm -hmm. um, I think... That's yeah. my goal. Yeah, and you are, that's, you're in a younger region and you're doing something now. And it's like, I'm just, if we're gonna do it, let's do it really well and continue to get even better. So I appreciate that, that's wonderful. Um, Charles, what about, what about you? Well, I think, you know, it's a very interesting comment from, uh, from Viviana, because I think it's true that uh, in the new, in the, in, in this part of the world, in, uh, we, we always try to get the, the journalist uh, and uh, it's uh, at a, who is going to go at the northern uh, planting. Now, who's going to go planting at the southern part of Chile? If you're in Argentina, it's who's going to go the highest? You know, so soon they're going to be planting in the Aconcagua thing. You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, like it's uh, and, and it is like this is breaking news, you know, and uh, and I think, you know, it's uh, I totally agree with Viviana. For me, my point of view is that Chile should focus on developing its uh, deal system. I think Sebastian had a very good in article uh, asking for more rules, which is uh, is bold coming from Santa Rita. And I think it's great that uh, someone from uh, from such a winery is speaking like this because it's totally, um, it's not gonna make a lot of friends in Chile, but I'm so totally in favor for that because we need to, to assess the sense of place of a DO of the origin of wines. And so I think for me, uh, and what we're gonna do at La Posto is really uh, to focus on Apalta. And I think Apalta we're just at the start of the DO and, we're, and, and even if we've been doing it for 20 years. Um, and, um, and so we're gonna be digging, you know, and, and really like there's many things coming wonderful that we can do still in Apalta. So that's gonna be our job to just that this little place there, we're gonna take care of that. And I'm glad to see in Chile too that um, new projects uh, on the broader scale in Chile, I'm glad to see new projects, smaller one, uh, winemakers that are not looking uh, for, you know, like the fame and things, and, but, but are really getting into doing their own project with their own style and uh, not looking so much into being uh, uh, so like uh, volumes and so on. So I think this is going to uh, give great value to Chile. Uh, because we, we, we need to have more wines uh, in the market. We don't have enough wines. It's always the usual suspect, which uh, the three of us are very glad to be part of, but we need more wines to come in the US to show the beauty of Chile. And for this, we need deals, we need focus, and we need to explore, and everyone needs to do their part. So I think uh, that, that's for me what Chile has to offer, and, uh, and, it's, uh, it's, and it's as a good stage to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm always for more wine, so that's fantastic yeah. and um and you do you now have your own 
little piece of earth, if you will, that that is now your the the Apalto. So that's exciting to see what's going to come from there. Um, other than just all already the amazing things coming. So, um, Sebastian, what about what about you? I think the yeah the future is actually very exciting, and I think we are really focusing now on 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 getting more more specificness about you know going deep and in terms of different varieties in different areas. I think um, we just jump on a project at Santa Rita of replanting a huge part of our home, um, replanting vineyards, pulling out some vines that weren't performing that well and just replant again. And that has a, the idea of rediscovering new area, I mean, new sectors of the vineyard, but also the, the main challenge of actually propagating those selections, you know, material that has been there for a you know, hundred years, um, which are not different clones, it's just a, variety has been surviving over years and it's a, just a, a magic place in terms of a, a popular variety and I think now um, there is a, that combination of um, establishment and more expertise that would help us to understand better in terms of denominations of origin to have a stronger definite country in terms of location or other things like words specific words like reserve or grand reserve but trying to get more specificness in terms of what that really means I think we need to make easier for consumers how things are, you know, understand what a label is. And I think that's Chile always was the, the magic about it in terms of being um, easy, in terms of accessible, really good wines that can be affordable and um, good quality. Chile can sell wines at a higher price, you know, and I think that's where we're getting about bringing quality higher above and also getting more specification in a specific um, areas, um, you know, and it could be more traditional areas and also areas that are new, I think. You know, Maipo, um, Apalta, um, Ley, that Limari in the north, uh, or either places that have been, you know, kind of forgotten and they're like Itata and Maule, which now are kind of fire. And you can go there and taste fantastic varieties, vineyards that are working, you know, smaller hills there and making fantastic ones. Um, so I think that, that all that aspect makes Chile a very exciting place um, right now. And I think that's uh, the, the, the challenges we see actually for the future. Yeah, then that's, that's good. I think that that, um, I know more detail can sometimes people don't want that, but for the consumer, I think once you understand what you're getting, it inspires more confidence in, in purchasing because then you know what you're purchasing, you know what you're you're going for, you start to understand it more. So I'm all for that. That's fantastic. Well, um, thank you all so much for being here and sharing your wines and your story and your passion for Chile. Um, one day I'm going to get back there. Um, I can't wait. Um, and for those of you at home, thank you for joining us. If you didn't get this trio already, highly recommend it. It's delicious. Um, it just showcases great diversity and quality coming from this country. Um, and we have a ton of other wines from Chile available from all these other wonderful places we were talking about. Um, yeah, there's just a lot that Chile has to offer. So go on wine.com and explore. Um, thank you again for all three of you, Viviana, Sebastian, and Charles for being here with your time. Um, we appreciate it. Stay, stay safe and cheers. Cheers, Gwendolyn. Thank cheers. you to all the team at wine.com. Um, thank you to everyone. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Guys. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. It's both a science and a form of high art. It's made from the combination of grapes, sunlight, rain, soil, and time. It's raised up in the moments that matter. It's wine. And we are wine.com. We have the largest wine selection in the world, online sommeliers with free advice, and now our powerful new app puts the entire world of wine in your hands. Wine.com, seriously passionate about wine. Download our free app today.